In this video, I am going to show you how to use Neo4j Browser for a Neo4j Sandbox. There are many types of Neo4j Sandboxes you can create. A Neo4j Sandbox is a Neo4j database instance. I have created the Recommendation Sandbox and have opened the Neo4j Browser for this Sandbox. The first thing that is shown when you open the Neo4j Browser for a Sandbox is the Browser Guide. The browser guide shows you how to use the sandbox and its data. Some Neo4j sandboxes are blank and contain a database with no data, while others have databases that are pre-populated with data that you can explore. In Neo4j browser, you have various settings and information on the left that we will learn about later in this video. On the right, we have two panes. The top pane is used for editing and running browser commands and cipher statements. The pane below the top pane is the result pane. This is where the results of the most recently executed command or cipher statement are shown. Notice that here, when we access the database running in the sandbox for the first time, the play command is executed. A command begins with the colon character. A cipher statement does not. In this recommendation sandbox, we see the guide for the sandbox. Before we play the guide, let's learn some basics about using Neo4j browser. We type the command help commands and press the enter or return key. This executes the command and displays the result in the newly created result pane. If we type help keys, information is displayed in the result pane about keyboard shortcuts. You can see quick help on cipher keywords. A very common ciphering keyword you will use is the match keyword for retrieving data from the graph. If we type help match, we see a brief description of the syntax for using the cipher keyword. The most recent result is always displayed under the Edit pane. The exception to this is if you pin the pane. If a pane is pinned, it will always stay at its position. Let's pin the pane with the result of executing Help Match. Here we type a different command, SIFS Info. Notice that the result of executing this command is placed after the pinned pane. Let's unpin this pane and now execute the last command, sysinfo, again. You can use the control command plus up and down arrows to select from the command and statement history. Here I am recalling the previously executed command. The history command will display all of the commands and statements that were entered and executed. Rather than navigating up or down to find the command or statement you want to execute, you can simply click on a block shown in the history result. When you do so, it brings the command or statement into the edit pane so you can optionally modify it and then execute the command or statement. Here we recall the help commands command and modify it in the edit pane to be help server. You can expand and collapse result panes. You can also delete result panes if they are not useful to you. A setting in the browser that may be useful for you is the number of result panes to display and the size of the command statement history. You can adjust these here in settings where you can modify the maximum number of result frames and the maximum command or statement history to keep. Another useful setting in Neo4j browser is to allow multi-statement queries in the query edit pane. You simply click the settings icon to collapse that part of the display. If you have many result panes displayed and you don't want to manually delete them, you can use the clear command to delete all of them. Even though you have cleared all of the result panes, you still have access to your command or statement history. Let's go back to that command in our history to play the browser guide for the recommendation sandbox. Here again is our browser guide. 
In a browser guide such as this, you can step through the pages of the guide to learn about the data model. Here on page 3, we see our first cipher code block. If you click on the code block, the cipher statements are then placed in the edit pane. Then you can run the cipher statement to perform the query against the database. The cipher statement executes and displays the data for movies. You should read the content of the guides to understand the data and the cipher code executed against the database. We navigate to the next page of the guide. Here we see other cipher code blocks. If we click on one of them, their code is brought into the query edit pane. This code returns a graph containing nodes and relationships as paths that satisfy the query. When a cipher statement returns a graph, it can be exported as an image or a CSV file. This result is displaying 30 nodes, 26 movie nodes, one director node, and three actor nodes, along with their corresponding relationships. This is just a subset of the data in the database. We can see information about the database by clicking the database icon here. The database contains a total of 32,314 nodes. It also contains 166,311 relationships between the nodes. If you click one of these node labels, it automatically returns a sample of at most 25 nodes of the node type from the graph. If you click a relationship, it returns a subset of nodes associated with that relationship. In addition, the property keys specified here are the properties for the nodes and relationships. The nodes of a graph are displayed with a color coding. Here we see that all actor nodes will be displayed in red, and all movie nodes will be displayed in orange. If you click on a type of node, you can modify the color of the node, the size of the node, and which property will be displayed as a caption in the visualization of the graph. If you click on a relationship type, you can modify the color and size of the connection. In this graph view, you can also select nodes and rearrange them in the result pane. If you want to focus on a particular node, you can select it and do things like expand all of its relationships in and out of the node. Or you can remove the node from the display. These actions do not modify the database, simply the display. Let's enter a cipher query to retrieve three actors and their respective movies. You can view the data as a graph or as a table. Viewing the table allows you to see all of the property values for the nodes retrieved. Another form of the result is as plain text. And of course, you can always view the code that was executed. Some cipher statements, when executed, will return values that are not a graph. Here we modify the statement to return values. The result is not a graph, but simply a table or plain text of the names of the three actors and their movies. We can rerun the last statement, modifying it to return 10 names. If you execute a statement or command that has a syntax error, the browser will display the error in the result pane. Once you have identified the error, recall the last statement, correct it, and execute it.
Another useful area in Neo4j browser is the documentation area where resources are displayed. Now when your browser session ends, all the commands and statements that you executed are cached in the web browser's local store. How the local store for your browser is managed is up to you, but you cannot rely on the cache being available for your use, especially if you switch browsers or systems. As you are executing browser commands and cipher statements, you can save them to your favorites. If you click the Favorites icon on the left, the Favorites pane is visible. This pane contains some starter cipher code that you can adapt for your needs. Some of these sample scripts can be quite useful during development. For example, what kinds of nodes exist. You can select any of this code and run it. In your Query Edit pane, you can also modify the code and run it. Notice that the first line of the code is a comment, which is interpreted as the name of the code in the Favorites pane. In your development environment, you will most likely want to create and maintain a set of cipher scripts that you can reuse. For example, you may want to save the cipher script for finding the matrix movie information. First, we create a folder called Recommendations in Favorites. This will enable us to place all scripts related to the Recommendations database in this folder. If we decide to create scripts for a different database, for example, Customers, we would create a folder for those scripts. We already have the script that we want to save in our Edit pane. At the beginning of the script in the Edit pane, we add a comment which will be interpreted as the name of the script. Here we add the comment, the matrix query. Next, we click the favorite icon to add it to the favorites. We simply drag the script so that it is placed under the recommendations folder. We are not done with saving our favorites. The Neo4j browser, when run from a web browser, has access to browser sync in the cloud. This enables you to save settings and scripts in the cloud that you can reuse later in a different browser or system. To perform the browser sync, you must sign in to the cloud using an existing account or by creating a new account. Once you are connected, any additions to scripts or changes in Neo4j browser settings will be saved or synced in the cloud. If you remove a script from Favorites, its removal will be applied to the cloud when you sign out of Browser Sync. And here we see the Clear Local Data button. This is useful sometimes when you need to clear the Favorites or Settings data in your web browser cache. If you are done with syncing your scripts, you can sign out. So that's our quick tour of using the Neo4j browser from a Neo4j sandbox.